Hi everybody, it is Zoe from Sugar Street Studios. How are you doing? We are back this week with our Cakes Around the World series and we are in the Netherlands because we are making what to my mind is really the home of cake or better put, cake that makes me think of home. What am I talking about? I am talking, of course, about apple cake or apple pie. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We don't just do recipes, no, we do cake art, techniques, hacks, tricks and tips to help get you through your cake decorating conundrums. But along the way, I love to share recipes because after all, it is all about the cake. You to have a look at the goodness inside that apple. So Dutch apple cake is characterized by this deep, Fill. looks like a pie crust but actually is much more like a cake in texture this lovely buttery sort of cookie dough like crust which encases apples which are scented with that deliciously sweet aromatic Dutch spice blend stop okay. I need to eat a little piece of this so Good. The recipe's listed below. You can also check out and read my blog. There's a link to that below too. But let's get started and let's make the mother of all apple cakes, Dutch apple pie. So let's have a look at the ingredients that we're gonna need for this cake. They are listed below, but essentially what we're making is a crust, a dough crust from butter and sugar and flour and a few flavorings and raising agents, and then our apple pie filling. So there are two styles of the apple pie filling, the apples themselves, and we use a mix of tart and slightly softer, sweeter apples, and also the spice mix, an aromatic, peppery, sweet, fragranced set of spices that really do bring this cake to life. I recommend you make your own, the blend is listed below, but if you don't have the ingredients or you don't want to, you can equally use cinnamon or a blend of cinnamon and ginger. So to begin with, we want to make the crust and into a cake mixer, I am going to add in butter and my soft brown dark sugar, you can use soft brown light sugar, and then my dry ingredients I've put all together, the flour, baking, raisin, agents, and salt. You want to blend the butter and sugar together until creamy and well combined, and then add in the eggs bit by bit, reserving a little bit for your egg wash at the top. Now you will need to stop and just clean the sides of the bowl and just give it a little bit of mixing time to make sure that it's really well combined. I'm going to add to this mix a teaspoon of good quality vanilla paste. So you can see I've got this lovely creamy mixture. And then finally to that, I'm gonna just slowly fold in or mix in the, the flour mix and that's gonna create the dough. I tend to do it a third at a time or in two, in two lots, Put the mixer on low so the flour doesn't go flying. And as soon as it's combined and come together, stop. This is the consistency here that you're after. So it's quite sticky. Tip it out onto some cling film and you'll see that as you begin to push it together, it will combine and stick into a dough. So I want to flatten it into a, well, sort of squash disc shape really. And then we're going to wrap that up nicely snug as a bug in the cling film and then put it into the refrigerator for about two hours so that the dough can firm up and the butter can harden. So whilst that is in the fridge, we're now going to start on our apple filling. That is the Dutch spice mix I was talking about before. I've got some orange zest and some lemon zest about half a fruit of each and 100 grams of chopped walnuts this is optional now apple wise i've gone for two varieties i've gone for a soft i've got the the pink ladies three of those and seven of a slightly more tart apple i used brayburn you will need to peel core and chop all of those apples into little squares no bigger than an inch in fact mine are probably ever so slightly smaller, bearing in mind that the apples will cook inside the cake, so you don't want huge pieces. 
So once you have chopped up all of your apples, and yes, that takes a little bit of time, you then want to add in the sugar, the zests, some lemon juice, don't forget to pick out any pips, and then two to three teaspoons of your spices and mix all of that in. If you're using Calvados or alcohol, this is the time to add it too, as well as the raisins. Now I have just heated this up for about 10 minutes just to slightly start par cooking those apples. Once I've done that, I then add in, you can see the corn flour and the chopped walnuts, and I'm gonna leave that to cool. By doing this, I've given my apples a little bit of a head start. So my dough is chilled. You can see I cut off about a third there, put that to one side, and I am now rolling out the dough big enough so that I can cut a nine inch circle out of it and have enough dough to fill the sides of my prepared cake pan. It's a spring form pan. This is important. It's going to help you out later. And I have lined, I've buttered, floured it and also lined the bottom with a greaseproof ring. I'm taking little pieces of dough and just using my fingers, overlapping them, you can see it's pretty rustic, just to push in the sides of the, of the pan, making sure that the bottom and the sides are connected because we don't want to leak out any apples or, or juice anywhere. So you won't see that it's rustic, so don't worry about that at all. Just as I say, make sure it's even. Fill to the top and once you're good with that, then you can pile in with your cooled apple mixture and just tip all of that in and that should come near enough to the top of the cake pan. And once those are all in, just press them down slightly and finally roll out that last bit of saved dough. And as I say, it's soft so it may well tear but don't worry because it joins back up again. And I am just... I've been really rough and rustic here. I've just thrown it on and I'm just trying to use it all up really so I don't don't waste any. So I'm cutting along the sides, but then I decided to reuse the leftover dough just to add in on the top really. As I say, when you eat it, it's got quite a nice cakey texture to it. So it's not really like a thick pastry. Uh, so I, I just didn't want to waste it really. So it went on the top. And then with my reserved egg wash, just brush the top of it and then a sprinkle of finely chopped walnuts and brown sugar. Then in the oven, 180 degrees or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for up to an hour. Check it after 50 minutes. Check that the apples feel soft when you put a skewer in. And when it comes out of the oven, you leave it in the tin for a good 30 minutes, okay? Then you can release the ring like I'm doing here and then allow the entire thing to cool on the base of the cake tin for at least four hours or preferably overnight. Now I left mine overnight and you can see as I cut it here that the entire thing you, holds together and you can see it very much does perform like a cake and not a pie. And there we go, that is it on the inside. So really letting it set is super key because it means that none of those apples will fall out. They will stay ensconced in that lovely, delicious, buttery pastry. And oh, those spices. Wow. So delicious with a scoop of vanilla ice cream or some freshly whipped cream. And this to me is the ultimate apple cake. I hope you enjoyed that recipe. If you make it, let me know. And if you're interested in checking out some of the other recipes from our Cakes Around the World series, we've been to Morocco, we've been to Brazil, we've been to the States, we've been to Italy. We are globe trotting. We are cake trotting around the world. But that is a seriously delicious cake. So if you make it, I would love to hear how you get on. Thanks again, guys. I hope to see you soon. Bye.